Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is, um, as you may remember from a previous video, our, uh, our squad leader figure with his torch. Um, and he and his compadres are going on a diorama. And so in this part two of this little uh, series, we will be building the diorama for this chap and his friends to go on. So, let's get on with it. Right, so uh, this is the base of our, uh, our diorama. Um, and if you watched the uh, uh, display box video, uh, you saw me cut uh, these pieces here, which is 3mm MDF. And these are to go on here to provide the uh, the walls and the floor of our diorama. Um, so I've just put them together loosely with some masking tape, just so I've got them roughly where I want them to be. And what I've been doing uh, is thinking about where I'm going to put things. Now, the idea of this is it's supposed to be like a, an underground lab where nefarious experiments take place. Um, and our intrepid warriors have, uh, have stumbled across it uh, either like at the end basically the end of World War II um, when you know there were all kinds of weird things going on um, so yeah that's what's going to happen with this now the problem is I've been looking for sort of 1 35th scale like hospital equipment and stuff and I haven't really been able to find anything which is annoying and certainly nothing I could get in any sort of decent amount of time and certainly not for the prices some people want for things. Um, but I have got a few uh, alternatives. So let me move this out of the way and I'll show you. So what I have got are these uh, field tool shop sets. And I've got two here. Uh, let's do them one at a time. Um, so this one is uh, the field tool shop uh, from, <laughs> I can never say it, Italeri, Itali <laughs> yes, Italeri, it's, one, it's, one of, it's like, um, what's the other, uh, lin linoleum, linoleum, there are certain words that I can't say unless I really think about it, and this is one of them, Italeri, and the other one is linoleum, so yeah, anyway, that's the other one. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, we're trying to do like a lab kind of, you know, experiments and all that kind of stuff. But I thought there's a lot of things in here that we can actually use. Now, the main thing that caught my eye with this is the table. That's good. I want a table. Um, but there's also things like the uh, oxyacetylene cutlers. Because obviously oxygen bottles, gas bottles you find in hospitals and things. Um, these spray guns, I thought, might be quite useful for things like some kind of, you know, injection thing. Um, and then there's other bits, you know, it's like hammers. I'm not really funny, but hammers are used in medical, you know, procedures. Um, I mean, even like the compressor and that I might find it useful. But the other thing as well, and I'll, I'll come across more about what it's for later, but these bolt cutters are going to be very important. So that's this set. Let's have a quick look in the box. Oh, they're very... Box could do with being a couple of millimeters bigger. Um, so there's two frames, and um, they actually don't look that bad. Uh, there's a couple of bits that have got some nasty flashing on, like the this smaller barrel. And again, the barrels we'll use. Um, I've got got some ideas for the barrels. Uh, so there's the table. So that's a nice big table. I like that. Um, and then there's toolboxes, I mean, anvil and all that kind of stuff we won't use, but, but some of it we'll use. Uh, and then on this one, we've got um, some tools. Uh, there are the... Uh, that's one spray gun. Where's the other one? I saw it somewhere earlier. It's disappeared now. Anyway, um, there are two spray guns. We'll, we'll probably use those. Um, but I say, I might use this compressor actually just you know for fun um and uh, oh there's the other spray gun there right next to me uh so there's that uh so that's the uh the it italeri one 
and the other set is this um, field workshop uh, from uh, Mini Art. Again, 135th scale. Now, I've not used anything from Mini Art before, but I've heard good things. So let's have a look in the box. Oh. Oh, there's a lot going on in here. Uh, instructions, it has photo <laughs> Um, apparently, we'll have a look for that in a minute. Uh, yeah, so there's the instructions to put everything together. Oh, I see. Oh, well, there's some of the photos there. It's for the, uh, the the jerry cans. Oh, I like that. I like what they've done there. And that one's a saw blade. That's a good idea. And there's another one there. Yeah, I like that. Okay, um, let's have a look at the parts. Now, there's there's quite a lot going on in this box. So I won't go through all of it, but um, again, there are certain things in here that I think will be useful. So we've got a table here. It's smaller than the other table, um, but again, might be useful. Now there's some tools on here that might be handy. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but again, hammers. Now this uh, brace here, which is a drill, those are actually used in medical procedures. Uh, there's a, a, a process called trepanning, where they drill a hole in your head. Uh, look it up, trepanning. But they actually use a, a drill like that, a brace like that, um, because you have a lot more control over it than you would with a power tool. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, now, these seem like very good mouldings, but again, there are there is some flashing, because it's like there, the hacksaw, which again is something else we can use. That's got some flashing on it. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, so there's that. I'm not, like I say, I'm not gonna go through everything because as I say, there's a, there's a huge box of bits here. Uh, there's a ladder there that we probably won't use. There's the other table. Uh, that's the um, stand for the oxyacetylene cutter. We probably won't use that. Now here, chairs. Uh, we'll probably use those and here are some of the jerry cans which we might use might not uh, that is the uh, toolbox now this toolbox is interesting because there's two versions of it there's an open version and a closed version which is nice so it's like there are the ends for the open version and there are the ends for the closed version that's good like that. But again, you see there's like cutters, pliers, things like that. We can use those. Uh, now these oil drums, may well use those. I've got an idea of what to do with those. Uh, there's another oil drum. Uh, these are the tops of the oil drums. Now these are nice actually, I like these, because what they've done, I don't know where you can see that, but on one side they have uh, like, stuff printed on them or stamped into them and on the other side they're blank so you can use them for what you want that's good uh, there's the oxyacetylene bottles welding mask we won't need that but um, yeah so again you know like we can use them for oxygen bottles or whatever uh, oh there's some more bits for the jerry cans there's the, the lids and whatnot uh, what have we got here oh these are just boxes and stuff might use them might not Another chair. Uh, don't know what that is, <laughs> quite frankly. Uh, jerry can, another uh, more oxyacetylene. Oh, and there's a um, couple of uh, buckets there, which we'll probably use. And I think this, oh, there's some decals, look. How about that? Oh, I see. They're, they're the crosses for the water cans. Because the jerry cans, if they had, if they're used for water, they put white crosses on them to differentiate them between fuel cans. And then there's also some decals for the gauges for the oxyacetylene, which is useful. And this must be the. Oh, yeah, this is the photo etch. So, what we've got there is there are the bits for the. Uh, uh, the. Uh, jerry cans there's the, oh that's the, that's the handle for the bucket I like that and there's another one there look um, there are the saw blades oh my god that, that saw blade has actually got teeth on it 
that's brilliant. You could literally cut with that. Um, yeah. And then there's some various bits for the toolboxes and that. Uh, that's the blade for the hacksaw. That's the blade for the handsaw. We'll need those. Um, yeah, so that's good. I'll put that back in there so it doesn't get damaged. So I'll put all this stuff back in the box and uh, we'll see what we're going to do with all of this. Right, so I've just put a few of these bits together and put them on the diorama just uh, as a quick thing to see where things are going to go. And I must admit, I'm kind of struggling a bit here. And the main issue I have is, let's just put them over there for a minute, out of the way, is this table. Because originally I had in, planned to have this table in the middle of the room, like that. Um, but the problem is... Uh, if I put that in the middle, this guy is going to be at the end here, and what it, what happens is the table blocks a lot of the light going this way, which it looks fine at the moment, but when you see it in the darkness, uh, and I have tested this in the dark, uh, yeah, it just looks a bit weird. Um, so, I mean, and if I put the table back, so I was going to have like the table there, this guy, oh god, if I didn't knock him over, come here. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of tricky. Um, and I was going to have this guy here, this guy, and then, and then your guy on the floor down there. Um, and the trouble is, what tends to happen is the light is blocked a lot so you, you like when it's dark you, you, you can't really see this guy at all so then I thought about putting the table at the back um, but I kind of like having the table in the middle because the idea is I'm going to um, uh, hopefully what I, what I want to do is, is have something on the table so it looks like they've been working on it and normally in a situation like if it was like a lab or something or a, you know a surgical bay you'd have access to all four sides of the table um, you wouldn't have it up against the wall and so I'm just kind of struggling a little bit at the moment but I think um, I think this guy is pretty much fixed in place he's gonna go here so I'm just gonna put a little mark on the floor where his the hole needs to be for the wire to go through and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin his other foot to the floor um, to hold him in place. But I'm not going to do that yet because I'm going to, I'm going to put him on this foot and then I can actually like rotate him uh, to get him exactly where I want him before I put the other, the other pin down. Um, and I've got to try and figure out what to do with these guys. Um, but I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to start working on the floor and the walls um, because they're going to be the same no matter what and while that's drying I can have a think about what I'm going to do with the rest of it and also I can start painting up some of these other bits um, and, and kind of go from there sort of thing so let's uh, clear all this off and figure out what we're going to do for the floor and the walls. Right, so this is the the side and the end of our uh, base and I need to make them look like concrete walls so what I'm going to do is based on the experiment I did before uh, I'm going to use this filler and what I've done is I've just masked the areas where um, the boards meet so for example on this end here where they overlap um, I've just put some there just so that it gives it a nice clean edge when I peel the tape off so I'm going to put some of this onto these and then make them look like concrete so I think of the best way to do this now because on the other one I just applied it with a with a coffee stirrer but uh, I think really I could do with something a little bit uh, bigger than that but a 
let's see how we get on. So I'm hoping if I just do one like pass over it with this. Oh, probably off that wasn't like a blooming donkey sign leg. <laughs> Let's get one that's actually straight and it might work. Oh dear. Once again, with feeling. Right. I think that'll do, to be honest. It's like I say, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to give it some texture. Uh, let's do the other bit. Right, so it's time to put some paint on our uh, on our walls. Um, I've given them a good spray of hairspray, and I am going to give them a coat of this uh, XF55 deck tan. Uh, the reason I'm doing it with this and not the white is because I don't want the thing looking too um, well white, really. So I thought this this would be a good alternative. Right, let's get some of this paint off. So. Got me sellotape here and we'll just stick that on there. Now when I did the uh, like the prototype for this when I was doing the, um, the the version where I was just trying it out I removed a lot of paint I don't want to remove as much this time so I'm gonna be a bit I mean it doesn't matter if a lot comes off but I I'm not looking for that level of destruction this time if you like so Put the tape on, push it down, and then, and there we go. We'll do a bit more. So, like I say, I don't want I don't want masses of of, of uh, paint coming off. All right. To be honest, that'll probably do for that. Let's get the other bit in and do that. Right, so here are our two uh, wall sections uh, with, our, with a bit of paint chipping on them. So what we'll do now is uh, get the palette out, get the acrylics out and do a bit of, uh, bit of light staining, shall we say. Right, so I've got my palette with my uh, various different colours and we'll see what we can do here. Right, I think that'll actually do. I don't want to go mad with this. Um, we'll just do a little bit like that and then uh, we'll do the same on the other wall. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a piece of pipe to go along the wall here uh, just to add a, a bit more interest. So what I've done is I've drilled a, a suitably sized hole. This is uh, six mil styrene pipe from Evergreen. Um, so that will go through the, 
the wall there like that and then that will obviously go where it needs to go and that will give us our pipe along the wall. So I'm just going to mark where the various transition points are. So I need to make some brackets to fix it to the wall which is why these rusty bits are here and I also need to mark the end where it's going to uh, so it doesn't stick out the end of the diorama. Um, so that's that and what I think I might do as well is put um, a joint in to make it to have another pipe coming down the wall so I think I'm going to put that near the end here I'll put that about there I think and what I'm going to do is get a piece of this smaller styrene pipe and uh, have that coming down and out through a hole I might actually put it in the middle I think I'll put it in the middle actually, that probably make more sense. Um, so let's measure between those two lines. So that's 115 mil. So half of 115 is, come on anybody, 57.5. So we will measure 50, 7.5 and put a mark there and I'll show you how I'm going to do this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in this that's a four millimeter hole for for this uh, piece of pipe to go into so I'll go and do that on the drill press now and um, then we'll uh, we'll go from there in fact I might even do it here with the hand drill just for fun so you can see what I'm doing Right, let's put these pieces to one side so they don't get dinged up. So, let's get our knife. And we will make a mark, a little pilot in the pipe like that. And then we'll take a small drill to get us started. Like that. And then we'll just step it up a bit. Like that. And then we take our four mil and go all the way through. He says, as it doesn't go all the way through. The trouble is with these pin vices, once you get above a certain size, they have trouble gripping. All right, there we go, that's got it. Okay. Just clean that hole up a touch. Like that. And then if we take this, that should fit. I just remember this is four and a quarter millimetre. Let me just open that hole up a touch. <laughs> trouble with these uh, sometimes with these like aftermarket parts is they're they're not as accurate as they could be all right I'll just clean this hole up and hopefully that'll be enough just to open it up enough to get that in there Yeah, that'll work. I'll just need to open that up a little bit more, but that's fine. Um, so, let's get this back in for a second, because what I need to do is measure how long this piece needs to be. Uh, so, that needs to go like that. Uh, 
Oh, I'm getting caught up on the camera stand. Alright, let's put that like that. Mark that. It'll be a couple of millimetres too long, but that's fine. I can trim it down after. It's better to cut it too long than too short. Right, let's move that out of the way again. Let's get the saw and cut this end off. There we go. Right, let's put that back in the box. Clean the end of this up. There we go, that's got it. Right, so there's our pipe. Now, to make the brackets and whatnot, is I'm going to mark five millimeters on either side of this pipe here, and I should also mark five millimeters down from where it intersects with the pipe, which is here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to masking tape solves all kinds of problems. This will be a lot easier if I can find the end of it. There it is. So, we'll cut a piece of this off. Like that. And then we will put that on there like that. Wrap that around the back and then wrap this round like so. There we go, that'll do. That looks right, doesn't it? <laughs> right, let's do the rest of these. You've just got to be careful when you're putting the tape round that it goes on straight. Like that. I'll we'll do one more bit. So that's our little flange fitting. Uh, so I need to trim this end off. With the razor saw. Clean that end up. And clean that end out. Because obviously you'll be able to see this, so we want that one that end looking nice. Right, so that's our pipe all um, cut to length. I've just spent some time fitting it to make sure it fits properly, which it does. So now I'm going to make the support brackets to go on the wall. So I've got here another piece of uh, evergreen styrene. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to make a couple of right angled brackets uh, that will kind of stand off of the wall and um, give us something for the pipe to sit on. So let's just, so that's So I think what I'll do is I'll cut these off 10 millimeters long. Oh, this stuff is sometimes very fiddly to work with. But just, yeah, it'll all be worth it in the end. So there. there and then we will cut through there and then we'll do another one like that And then what I want to do is I want to cut another couple of pieces of this to come off at a right angle and go down to the wall. So I want a straight piece like that and then I'll cut a 45 degree to go across it. I might even cut those 10 mil as well. Oh. One. And. like that right so now we want to glue these pieces together like this like that and then I've got another piece here that I'm going to put across the middle I think this would be easier to cut with me snips so kind of like there Another one the same. And then we'll drop that in there. Do the same on this one. And we'll leave those to dry. Right, so these have had a chance to set up a bit. What I want to do now is I want to make uh, some um, 
like bands to go around the pipe and attach it to the bracket. So what I'm going to do is use a piece of this uh, breadboarding wire that I got. Uh, it's the kind of stuff you use for like Arduinos and stuff. Um, I've got tons of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and this is going to be tricky, but we'll give it a go. And what I'm going to do is use my little Archimedes screw, and I'm going to drill a couple of holes in this bracket. So we'll put one at the end here, like that. And then, oh. <laughs> this is so fiddly. And then we'll do one at the back, like that, which is going to be a little bit more tricky, but because oh. I'm kind of drilling at an angle, that's the problem. But we'll get it. Right. There we go. So now what I need to do is I'll just use this little scrap piece of pipe. And what we'll do is bend the wire around the pipe like that. I don't think that's going to be long enough. Let's straighten it out and go again. So, like that. Around the pipe. And then, let's just nip that off. It's a bit wonky. Now, hopefully, we can put that. There we go, that's got it. Like that. Now, let's just pop that through there. We'll glue that bracket in place. With a little drop of super glue. A drop there and a drop there, like that. Try not to stick my fingers to it. Let's just give that a little spritz of. Accelerant. Right, so that will now come off of there and we can take our snips and just nip off that and that. And there we have our little bracket, you see. I'll do the other one. Right, now just before we move on, I want to talk about something. I want to talk about mistakes. Um, so I'm going to use this to perfectly demonstrate what I'm talking about. So this is the end wall of our diorama, and I drilled a hole in it for the pipe. Except I drilled the hole in the wrong end. So I drilled another hole in the right end and I drilled it in the wrong place. <laughs> now, the reason I'm telling you this is twofold. One, I want to show you, uh, not right now, but later in the build, I'm going to show you how we're going to fix these mistakes. But more importantly, 
I wanted to talk about um, mistakes in general. I think one of the things that, I mean, I get a lot of comments um, from people saying, oh, I wish I could make models as well as you, and da da da, -da. Um, And firstly, I don't particularly think I'm that good a modeler, but that's beside the point. We're always our own worst critic. But I think one of the things that, I, I mean, I've certainly noticed it watching other people's videos, is there are very, very few people who will show you the mistakes they made. And... We all make mistakes when we're doing builds, and anybody who says they haven't made a mistake when they make is a liar, because we all make mistakes. And what I wanted to impress upon everybody with this is, if you make a mistake, don't be disheartened. Don't think you're the only one that's making a mistake. Don't think it makes you a bad modeler or a bad person or whatever. We all make mistakes. The most important thing if you make a mistake is figure out a way to fix it and move on. And these mistakes, and let's face it, this is some proper howlers. I mean, talk about measure twice, cut once. Uh, <laughs> I measured this and then cut it three times. Um, but all of this can be fixed and will be fixed. But more importantly, don't beat yourself up if you make mistakes because we all do it. We'll fix it, we'll move on, and that'll be the end of it. Anyway, let's get back to the build. Right, so what I want to do now is just put this together uh, just loosely so that I can figure out where the um, where the, the brackets need to fix to the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this together Because obviously the the fixed points on this are this end. Oh, you can't really see that very well. Um, the fixed points are this end here where the pipe is, and then the other end where that pipe goes. So we'll just put all this, just like I say, just loosely together, like so. And all I want to do here. is I just want to mark on the pipe so there and there because that's where the brackets need to go because what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the brackets onto the pipes and then um, we can get on with painting it. And what I'm going to do is put this in the right place like that and then I'm going to put a little dab of super glue around there like that And then I'll give it a little spritz of accelerant. Let that dry. Not sure if that's actually. Oh, is that not gripped? Oh, that's better. I think it just took a few seconds longer to activate than I thought it was going to. Right, okay, that's fine. Now we do the other one, same deal again. Just put that in place where we want it. And put some super glue on it. that a little spritz like that now we can take it apart again and we can paint the pipe
Right, so that's our pipe uh, done. So what I'm going to do is give this a bit of paint. So I think what I'll do is I'll start by giving it a coat of uh, black primer out of a rattle can. So before we can actually go any further, I do actually fi need to fix one of these mistakes, which is this hole here, because um, I need to get this fixed uh, before I can put the pipe and everything in. Not that we're doing that yet, but it's as good a time to fix it now as any. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a protractor. I've got this set here um, from Rotring. This was actually given to me by a neighbour. Uh, they just posted it on Facebook and said, I've got this set, I've never used it, does anybody want it? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll have it. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to use a compass out of this. Right, so I've got this compass. I'm going to set this basically so that what it will do, I want to go roughly from the middle of Bit there, fix it. Um, from the middle of the hole that we want to keep to the edge of the hole that we want to get rid of which is about there with a bit of fudge factor I think that will do us like that now we get a bit of our uh, styrene sheet and what we're going to do and we'll draw a circle Like so. So we'll just mark that with a pencil. And what I'm going to go and do now is I'm going to go and drill this out to 6mm on the drill press. Right, there we go. You can see there, another no, it went wrong again. It just, the, I, I went too fast with the drill bit and it just ripped it. So anyway, I've done another one, that one's fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get a pair of scissors and we're going to cut this circle out. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but try and get it as close as you can. Like that. That's nearly a circle. <laughs> uh, and now, let's get our, our little scrap of styrene and we'll go... I might have to open this hole out of touch. Where's my knife? This is quite tricky to do because this um, styrene is so thin it's difficult to hold it because it just wants to fold up all the time. Right, like that and then we put that through the hole like that and you see that covers the other hole so now what we'll do is we'll take our knife and we will cut across here like so And I'll clean that up in a second with a bit of sandpaper. But there you see. And then what we'll do is we'll just dress this up a little bit, make it look a bit more interesting. And the way we can do that, I'll take this off of this now. So this is uh, one, I think, is it one millimetre or half millimetre? I can't think now. Uh, I think it's one millimetre. Yeah, so this is one millimetre, um, again, round styrene. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut some little pieces off like this, which is fiddly, but not impossible. Try not to drop the thing on the floor. Trouble is with these things is they stick like crazy because of the static. Right, there's a few that'll do just to demonstrate. And we'll put 
put one at the top there. Like that. And we'll put one at the bottom like that. And then we'll just kind of fill in a few in between. Like that, you see? And then we'll let that dry. And then we'll put the pipe, put it on the pipe, stick it in place, and uh, put some paint on it. Right, let's drop that back in the hole. There you go. That doesn't look too bad, does it? So that's completely covered up that hole and also made, kind of dressed up the joint between the pipe and the wall, just made it a little bit more interesting. And here is the finished article. Uh, well, for now, anyway. Um, this seems like a good place to, uh, to bring this video to a close. So what we have now is we have our figures that we saw in the first video. We've got our base that we've made now. And what we need to do now is start filling this thing up. And that will all be coming in the next video. So uh, I hope you've been enjoying this little series so far. I've actually been having great fun with this. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.